You may be seated. We've got some big breaking news in San Antonio, Texas. There's a verdict. Let's listen. Was it a unanimous verdict? Yes, it was. Can you please hand the verdict form to the bailiff? Can the defendant please stand? In front. Verdict form. We, the jury, find the defendant, Juan David Ortiz, guilty of the offense of capital murder as charged in the indictment and as instructed in this charge. Signed by the presiding jury. This is your verdict, correct? Thank you. Mr. Ortiz, uh, you heard the jury's verdict. Uh, you have the right to allocution, which means you have the right to make a statement if you wish. We have the jury forward. Okay, so they're asking for the jury to be polled, so meet the jury list. Well, I'm just going to call you by number in the, from the back. Juror number one, can you please stand and tell me, was this your verdict? In the, well, okay, in the front. Guilty. Juror number two? Guilty. Juror number three? Guilty. Juror number four? Guilty. Juror number five? Guilty. Juror number six? Guilty. Juror number seven? Guilty. Juror number eight? Guilty. Juror number nine? Juror number 10? Guilty. Juror number 11? Guilty. And juror number 12? Guilty. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. So, Mr. Ortiz, as I was saying, uh, you have the right to make a statement if you wish. Uh, do, would you like to make a statement at this, at this time? No. Anything else? Nothing for the defense. Right? All right. And Mr. Alanis? Were there going to be victim impact statements made? Yes, Your Honor, after the court. Okay. Sent, uh, the court was sent. I just wanted to make sure that. Yes, we yes. have representatives of the family that would like to make victim impact statements after Mr. Yeah. Ortiz's sentence. Correct. So, Mr. Ortiz, at this, uh, as, as you know, uh, I'm sure your attorneys have informed you and you've heard throughout the trial this. Uh, this charge of capital murder has uh, an automatic uh, sentence of uh, life in prison without the possibility for for parole. Uh, so at, at this time, the court is going to uh, assess the, the punishment of life in prison without uh, the possibility of parole. That is your sentence at this time. Mr. Alanis. Your Honor, at uh, this time, I'd like to ask the any family member from uh, representing Melissa to please step forward. <laughs> Melissa Ramirez. Sure. And you, you do have uh, the right to appeal uh, this verdict. Uh, I'm sure your, your attorneys have informed you of that as well. Um, would you, are you at this time asking? Yes. Yes. For, yes, you are. Okay. Do you want to have an, an attorney appointed for that purpose? Yes. We'll follow the preliminary. Testing. Yes, sir. Follow the paperwork so I can, um, I know that uh, at least one of you is not going to be available. So we'll see who the appellate lawyers are that are available on the list. All right. Sir, anything else? Juan David Ortiz has been found guilty of capital murder. You heard the reaction in the gallery. You see the faces of the victims on those shirts. And now is going to be the moment for the victims to have a voice as we hear the impact statements from their loved ones. Let's listen in. Thank <laughs> you. 
I met Melissa Ramirez's sister-in-law. Melissa was an, a loving, kind, and funny person. She always looked out for her kids. Melissa was not alone, so I'm here to speak up for her. I can't believe it took her life with no remorse. Melissa was more like a sister to me. She was the best person I could ever be with. I loved her so much, and I still do. I was always there for her, but sometimes I couldn't be there all the time. You took someone's daughter, sister, mother, and friend's life. How could you? She left her kids behind, and now their hearts are broken, knowing they won't be able to see their mom again because of what you do, what you did. Do you know how much pain you have caused to this family? Do you know how many times I wish for Melissa to show up to my home and see her and hug her and hear her voice again? I hate you for what you did and I can never forgive you, nor do I think God will. You deserve to suffer in prison and go to hell. I still mourn for my sister-in-law. Even though it's been four years, I feel as if it happened yesterday. My heart is torn apart knowing that I won't be able to see her but to visit her in the cemetery. Monsters like you don't even deserve to breathe, nor wake up to every morning. You are a turd, so take back those words you've said to these beautiful women. You deserve to die and suffer for what you did, and when that day happens, I will finally be in peace. Yo soy la mamá de Melissa y quiero empezar a preguntarte a ti, monstruo, ¿por qué la mataste? ¿Por qué mataste a mi hija? Si ella tenía hijos, tenía hermanos y tenía una madre. Mi hija no estaba sola y dejaste a sus hijos huérfanos. ¿Por qué te ensañaste así con ella si estaba indefensa? Melissa no tenía maldad. Ella era noble, sensible. ¿Qué daño te hizo para que te ensañaras así con ella? ¿Por qué le quitaste la vida? No tenías derecho. Tú no eres nadie para decidir por la vida de otra persona. ¿Qué pensabas cuando jalaste el gatillo a quemar ropa por más de tres veces contra alguien indefenso? ¿Qué sentiste cuando callabas con tres balas sus gritos de súplica? Yo sé que Melissa no significaba nada para ti, pero para mí era mi vida. Y ahora mi vida está destrozada por su ausencia. Eres un monstruo que no merece estar respirando el mismo aire que yo. Ojalá que tu vida sea un infierno cuando estés en prisión. Cuando supe que la encontraron sin vida, sentí que me iba a morir de tanto dolor. Fue tan grande mi pena que mi alma no pudo habitar más dentro de mi cuerpo y me desplomé entre sollozos y gritos. Ya pasaron más de cuatro años y de mis ojos aún salen millones de lágrimas. Melissa era mi hija, mi más grande amor, y ahora por causa tuya ya no la puedo tener conmigo. Tú no te imaginas el daño que causaste a sus hijos. Maldito asesino, no sabes cuánto te aborrezco, eres un monstruo. Tus hijos siempre serán los hijos de un asesino. There you hear the voice of Melissa Ramirez's family, obviously in Spanish, um, speaking directly to the killer, directly to the killer inside that courtroom in San Antonio. We're going to take a short break. More of our verdict coverage when we come back. We have a verdict in San Antonio. Let's take a look at what's happening inside that courtroom because victim impact statements right now. Juan David Ortiz has been convicted of being a serial killer and the victim's families now speaking inside the courtroom. We can't show them because they're standing right in front of that jury. So let's listen in. Our, our lives came crashing down as everything started to unfold on September 14, 2018. You stated you were cleaning up the streets of Laredo, but as we stand here today, Mr. Ortiz, Mr. Alaniz did, and his team did just that by removing individuals like yourself from our streets. When becoming a federal officer, Mr. Ortiz, you swore to protect and to serve our country, but sadly, you failed to do so. Mr. Isidro Alaniz fulfilled that duty today. 
The extent of your actions have caused so much pain to so many people, including your own family. Just as we have lost our sister, my nieces and nephews have lost their mother, and my father lost his daughter. Your mother lost her son. Your wife lost her husband. And your precious children have lost their father. Your family has mourned their loss along with ours. They will continue to be in my prayers. I will pray for their strength and I will pray for peace in their hearts. I've carried so much these last few years, Ms. Ortiz. The pain and anger have been the hardest to bear. Today, I am wholeheartedly letting go and letting God handle what my heart cannot. Forgiving is part of healing. Today, Ms. Ortiz, I am choosing to forgive you because I know in my heart that Melissa, Claudine, Giselda, and Janelle are resting peacefully in the heavens above. I will now read a brief statement from my nephew, Claudine's son. What you did to my mother, Claudine, was a horrible thing. I forgive you, but only because forgiveness is not for you, it's for me. She would not have wanted me to feel that burden of what you did on me. You ruined so many dreams that my siblings and I have, but instead of despairing, we will create new dreams and paths because my mother would have wanted us to. You will be long forgotten in our memories and locked up until you die. But my siblings and I will move forward in the future knowing that our mother, Claudine, will always be by our side. I am the youngest daughter of Claudine Dora. He took my mom away from me. He ruined any chance I could have to have her in my life. The pain of having to lose my mom when I was only 17 years old. I was still a kid in my junior year of high school, September 13, 2018, when I experienced the worst day of my life. I was picked up from my high school and I was driven to my mother's sister's house and all my family gathered together to break the news to me and my brother. We were told that my mother was killed. My heart broke into pieces at that very moment. And being told that you killed my mom, that was heartbreaking. I was at a loss of words. I was in shock, but all I could do was cry and be angry because I knew I was never going to see my mom again. I was never going to hear her laugh. I was never going to be called mama or her little girl from her again. I was never going to be able to hug her nor be able to hear her voice anymore. I started grieving at my new reality that my mom was taken away from me so suddenly from my life. You, Juan David Ortiz, you didn't kill just women. You killed women who mattered, women who were loved by so many people. Those women were loved beyond measure. You will always be known and remembered in our community and in Laredo. And to the whole world, you will be known as a monster. You said you wanted to clean up the streets of Laredo. Our streets in Laredo will only be clean when people like you are put away in jail forever. You hurt my family. You hurt the other women's families. And you broke your own family. My mom had five beautiful children. You didn't just take her away from me. You also took her away from my brothers and my sister. I have All right, folks, our coverage will continue into the next hour. You will hear the victim impact statements as our breaking news coverage continues. Juan David Ortiz is now a convicted serial killer, and now the family gets to address him directly. With emergency. I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. We begin this hour. Big breaking news out of San Antonio, Texas. Juan David Ortiz, accused of being a serial killer, now convicted of being a serial killer. Life without parole. Right now, the victims' families are getting their opportunity to directly address the killer inside that courtroom. Let's take you back in. You won't see the family members because they're standing right in front of the jury who is also watching this. Let's take a look. 
pain. Real, real pain. You robbed me from meeting my mother and getting to know her as a person. Yes, my mom was a, oh, she was a drug addict, a prostitute. She maybe didn't mean nothing to y'all. She meant everything to me. And you robbed her from me getting to know her as a person because she wasn't just that. She really wasn't. And that's okay. She lived the way she lived. That's her problem. That's her lifestyle. Yes, we get it. But fast forward, I'm 18 now. I haven't gotten closure and I have, I'm, I'm not sure I ever will. I've struggled with a lot coming to this age, anger mostly. I wish I could feel, I can make you feel pain to be honest. And I hope one day you do get the pain you deserve. It's like you made me go numb to this point. I don't feel sadness, I'm, I'm mad, I'm real mad. But, but I can't be angry no more. I can't, so I forgive you. Like my mom said, God forgives you and he loves you. And, and I know deep down you hate yourself for murdering her. You even said it in your confession and everything. <sighs> Trust me when I say what she said is gonna be on your mental for the rest of your life. She was a compassionate person. She loved people. She really did. She loved her brother. She loved my tia, my, her tia. She loved everybody. She loved everybody. And even after you killed her, what she said, she wanted to help you. She wanted to help you. You were suicidal. Who was there? My mom. My mom tried to help you. That's not okay. That's not okay, bro. <laughs> and she was everything to me for a fact. I know she loved her, her children, but her lifestyle and demons took over. And speaking for my siblings and I, you, Juan, cheated us out of it. Out of ever getting to hear her side of the story on why she gave us up and understanding on what, what made her into the person she was. I know I said I forgive you, but deep down it's not for you. It's really not. It's for me to find peace in mind. Karma is a big thing and your karma is just only starting from here. Trust me, you're not going to make it in there. I hope you don't. And you will suffer in my heart. I know. I hope and I know you will not make it in there. And surely you know, you know your day is coming up. And then, God bless you and your family, because you tore your family apart just like you tore ours. And you will suffer. I promise you, you won't make it in there. Thank you, Grace. from Janelle O'Keefe's family. As the youngest sibling, I never thought I'd be going through this experience right now. It's a lot of emotions, you probably don't know. You can even know it. It's like losing a sibling. On September 15 of 2018, a piece of me left unexpected. Everything went blank, nothing sad enough. But she knew how to fight back. She wasn't afraid. I had to go look for her because I couldn't have been the transgender we all thought. We have to find him now. It was you, Juan David Ortiz. 
He left me with no words. He had everything in life as a border patrol agent. How could you? Why didn't you put up a fight against Janelle? I guess not so tough, right? You had to end her life. What trigger you to go through it? Like if there were dogs taking them on a cruise and then thinking it was. Because you weren't doing anyone a favor by cleaning up the streets. That was not your duty. My sister and her friends were in trash for you to go do what you did. You don't know the love they still had at home. No matter what lifestyle they chose to live or battles they had, they were loving, they still had kids to go home to. I still can't find the words to say, but this has impacted our lives and the community too. For most, I'm not the same person I was before. I had a smile before getting that traumatic call that changed my whole life. I used to be full of life. I was looking forward to meet with Janelle to register for college. She always loved occupying me every... I don't... Sadly, I don't get to hear that no more. Nor her reminders to keep my head up high and that I'll always be safe while she's alive. As I'm here talking, expressing my feelings of how you know, affected not just me, but other family. I just can't seem to stay mad forever about it. No matter the fact that you gave your word to protect the border and serve the people, yet you felt you betrayed your badge in the system. We're all grieving. I just don't know how I will forgive someone who showed no remorse and never put you. So in a situation growing up, but in order to move on with my life, God says otherwise, I can't question because he has his reasons, but I know Jenna would have fought hard. I don't have hate towards you. I just hate the fact that you didn't have a heart while doing it. As we suffer these past years, we deserve to suffer the consequences. I don't desire nothing bad towards you, but me. Just as with her. Because what she caused was nothing pretty. My sister is gone and so are her friends. You are still breathing, but I have faith and I believe you will get what you deserve. I pray your family doesn't go what we went through. They're not to blame, but you took poor lives in the most cowardly way. All the state has to. Yeah. Anything else in the defense of the state? No, no, no. Okay. I'm going to come to and remind the defendant to the custody of the sheriff's department at this time. Court adjourned. I need someone to take. And there you see Juan David Ortiz, convicted serial killer, being escorted out of the courtroom.